in the last video we talked about the five biggest mistakes that people make in their SOPs. In this video, I'm going to tell you the same five mistakes, but only in the case of LORs. Of course, the mistakes will also change. A lot of people write their own LORs. I already know that. A lot of people have to give the write up and basically give it to the recommender. Or sometimes your recommender might be doing these mistakes. So to avoid that, this video. All right. If you are interested in making sure that your LORs give you a boost to your profile, continue watching. By the way, did you know that the LORs are a lot more impacting than your SOPs? You know why? Because they have more credibility. If someone in the same field as basically just consider that I am someone on the admissions committee, right? And I am evaluating your application. And let's say I am a professor of computer science. And if a fellow professor of computer science tells me that, yeah, this person is good, you should hire this or basically not hire, you should admit this person. Well, I would see that, you know, because this person is the recommender who is recommending this person is already in the same niche as I am. He already knows that basically we're not, they do have an integrity code, right? And he won't just recommend anyone. So in case I know this person who is the recommender, I will 100% accept you. In case I don't know him, I will still give him a little more credibility over an applicant who would of course say good things about himself in their SOP. So it's important that your LORs are good. It's important that your LORs have the things that they need to have and that's really what you are looking for in this case all right so i'm going to give you all the five mistakes that you guys make or that your recommenders might be making and i need you to make sure that you submit the perfect lors if you do that you are one step closer to getting that admin right perfect so the first mistake that we're going to talk about over here is general content this is the most common mistakes this is the most common mistake basically what people do is they put in general content in the lor and general content can essentially mean that you're writing about you know the field and you're writing about the basically your recommender is writing about how you were uh, you know you are a great person or I think he's really fit for this program and he's really writing it out in twisted manners but he's not really doing anything more than that he's not giving something specific to your profile and general content can essentially apply to you or it can apply to someone that is your neighbor or someone who is basically working in the same field so if you are from biotechnology and your neighbor is also from biotechnology and let's say that you read this LOR and the same LOR applies to him as well, guess what? Your LOR is general and that's something that you don't want to see. You don't, you don't want to submit an LOR that is super general. So make sure that that issue is taken care of, right? In the next way, in the next really uh, big mistake that people make is the thing that LOR writing is super simple when not any, I, I think most people don't even know how to write them. So when I, I mean, the only way I learned LOR writing is when I went on to the professor's websites, like their personal pages, and some of them has, some of them really had kind of, you know, suggestions on how to actually write the LORs. So even for professors, a lot of professors don't know how to do it. They would just write a general LOR. So essentially a lot of times what professors do is they just kind of replace your name in a template that they have and they submit it. That's really the worst thing you could do that can literally kill your application trust me it's plagiarism it's straight up plagiarism and again that's also going to be making the first mistake which is general because if they have a template that they're using to give out for all of their students that's a general template because that can be applied to anyone in your field all right and that's what you do not want that's what you want to stay away from okay so make sure that your rec recommender is not practicing plagiarism if you are giving the LOR to them of course the content is given by you then you already know but in case they're doing it all on their own you gotta make sure of it that they don't really just use a template okay all right the third thing that I want to detail over here in this case is that all right th this is really the third mistake by the way and the thing is that a lot of statements are made without proof basically a recommender might be telling about how you are very persevering Okay, he might, and then he might start talking about how you are very hardworking. But where's the proof? There is no proof. If you are just writing down things that you know this person is so good, he's so brilliant, he's amazing. You should you should basically admit him. Well, you need to give some proof to back up your statements. You're making such strong statements like this person has a passion in in, in biotechnology. Well, where is that passion? Why can't we sh show that passion when we're also making those statements, right? That's important. You need to give some proof. You need to, need to give the admissions committee something that they can look at and say, all right, this is why 
this person you know wrote down the statement so what I like to do in the LORs that we do over here is that we kind of try to put in some anecdotes so we, we put in some anecdotes and we kind of you know create a build-up and in the end then we'll write all right this this is this showed me how this person is so persevering or hardworking so it's important to kind of create that build-up first so that people would trust you in your recommendations all right great these are the three mistakes let's go on to the fourth one and that is a short LOR now it's really <laughs> opposite to the case of the SOPs because when you write your own SOP you want to include everything in there I, I understand it gets too long but in the case of LORs because a lot of people are misled by what an LOR is let's say that if you go to an NGO and work for them or if you go to an internship some company and you work for them and you get an LOR from them which is like two or three paragraphs long and which states that you know yeah this person worked really well in this internship again remind yourself that that's general content that's not specific to your case and that's why they're kind of you know just replacing the names and giving it out to everyone so that's what you need to stay away from again in most cases when you see these LORs and really I did not know the meaning of LORs when I was in college basically I thought these were LORs they're not LORs they're just experience certificates of, of some sort that yeah this person has participated or this person has contributed that's it it's nothing more than that but if you actually need to see LORs they're a lot more longer than two to three paragraphs they can essentially span one page one full page or even more than that sometimes of course being concise is key over here if your LORs are super long that's not good as well but make sure that they are at least three to four paragraphs long which have you know maybe at least four paragraphs long I think below four paragraphs doesn't work and they should have some specific content relating to your profile not content like this person was just you know good in class which brings us to the fifth point which is the biggest mistake that people do in academic LORs they even when you know people submit the LORs to their recommenders basically a lot of times or the recommenders write it on their own they write down that this person was good in class well guess what the committee would already know if this person was good in class looking at their grades all right so establish a relationship with that person show that all right this person has done these many things on Nami, he's done some projects, he's done some research and maybe you know talk about things like even though he skipped a lot of my classes, maybe even though he skipped 15 days of class, he, he, came, uh, he came back and he completed the research project and he showed me the results which were absolutely astounding. So something of that sort, right? So it's important that you know when to concede, you know how to kind of create that build up and you know that you're not just talking about gentle things that this person was good in class because that doesn't prove anything they already have the transcripts they can take a look at them and tell that this person was good in class or not okay so yeah those are the five biggest mistakes that people make while writing the LORs again I'm gonna repeat them for a quick summary the first is that general content should not be included all right the second is plagiarism should be avoided the third is that statements without proof should not be included you should include proof always back them up Okay, the fourth is that the LOR should not be super short, like two to three paragraphs long. That, that's not the optimal length. And the fifth is that it's not just about being good in classroom, okay? It's a lot more than that that they're looking for in the LOR. All right, I think that concludes an amazing video. If you have some doubts or if you still want to discuss more or if you want me to draft your LORs, connect with me on Instagram or go into YMGrad and enroll into the service. Otherwise, all the best for your application process and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like this video.